If you've ever searched things like running training zones, what is threshold, or how do I train to run faster? I've coached hundreds of runners and triathletes, beginning to national team level. I've had over 25 athletes represent Canada internationally, and I currently work as a mental performance coach for Olympians and professionals across multiple sports. And in the running and endurance sport domain, one thing that every single one of them has struggled with at first was the definitions that we use for our intensity. And so they would start working with me, they'd show me their watch data, their plan, their previous training, their heart rate zones. And we discovered that they were all speaking different languages, right? So we had to figure out how do we talk the same language? So today I'm gonna to put everything, you can see it on screen here, into one major training system language nomenclature that we tend to do really poorly in endurance sports. So we're gonna look at the perceived effort, the heart rate, lactate physiology, and pace. If you've watched some of my previous videos, uh, breaking down the Daniel style training system. This is where I pulled from to compare what a Daniel's T pace was to the zone system, to the RPE. And so this is the one single framework that I use. And I think it's really empowering for athletes when you're talking to your coach, talking to other athletes, figuring out how you want to train and really understanding training to have this framework available and be able to understand it so you can implement training a lot better, train more consistently and remove the guesswork. So let's dive in. There's a bit of a problem with training zones, right? So first runners search stuff like what are my training zones? How do I train threshold or tempo? Or uh, should I run slow to get fast? What is zone two? What is zone three? But most answers online confuse more than they help because every coach is siloed in their own style. And so you get something from this camp over here and something from this camp over here. And for you, the athlete, it makes it really hard to organize that if you're self-coached or trying to navigate a coach who doesn't communicate with you a lot about what you're supposed to do. And so most online answers are more confusing. So what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna take all these camps that we have in, in running and endurance sport and put that nomenclature together and try to give you something that's usable. Okay, so here's what this chart actually is. This chart organizes every major way the body responds to intensity. Lactate, heart rate, perception of effort, duration, fuel usage, and it's just like one super powerful map. It shows your lactate thresholds, your RP or perceived effort, right? Your heart rate ranges, your expected duration before fatigue, right? It gives you energy source shifts, fat, carbs, right? Three zone, five zone models, right? I look at this and when I've talked to elite coaches and sports scientists over the years, we all kind of know this system, but then we silo off into our daily coaching environment and speak in one language. So we're all speaking the same thing, just with different words. Hopefully this helps clear it up for you. First, I wanna break it down and talk about two critical physiological landmarks, we could call them, your lactate threshold one and your lactate threshold two. So the first one, LT1 as I'll refer to it, is where the blood lactate begins to rise slightly, right? So that means your aerobic system is still dominant. The second LT2, where lactate starts to accumulate uh, you know, more rapidly and the stress on your system increases drastically. So in endurance performance, those thresholds define your aerobic and anaerobic boundaries. They're not arbitrary numbers on a watch. So below LT1, you can run almost all day. At LT2, you're near your upper end of sustainable limit. So Daniels would look at this as roughly your 45 to 60 minutes, depending on your, your training status. Understanding where these points live for you is probably the most important metric any runner can know because this is where adaptation happens and fatigue begins. So when I get a new athlete working with me, I'm looking to see what language they're using, what training vocabulary they've been using. So maybe they've been doing zone one, my easy runs feel too easy, I don't know what tempo really means because you know, who does? We use it in so many different ways. Part of what I say when I use this chart with them is let's define that in terms of physiology, not arbitrary watches. Let's align that with your heart rate, your perceived exertion and pace. Let's unify our language so we all have a common language and know exactly what adaptation we're targeting on every run. I do this so often that I actually built a calculator for athletes to see this that shows all of this data, heart rate, zone, pace, et cetera. I've got it linked in the show notes below if you wanna take a look and be able to use it for yourself. When I look at RPE on this, heart rate is useful. I don't wanna say it's not. I know there's lots of people who train with heart rate, but it has its limits, right? Devices lag or garbage, right? Hydration and stress can affect it. And so that's why a lot of elite runners will pair it or reference it with perceived effort. Time and time again, the research shows that perceived effort is king in understanding where you're training, right? And so the, one of the reasons why I like this chart is it maps out how your body feels to what it actually is. So below LT1 as an example, your RPE should be low, around 
easy conversational pace between LT1 and LT2, right? Comfortably hard for RP. At LT2, which is a threshold, depending on what language you're using, sustained high effort, right? So if we can teach you to gauge these sensations reliably, as I tell my athletes, you don't need a gadget to hit your targets. Anybody who works with me will know that like the number one question I give them when their final surge updates with their run is how did that feel today? And I'm sure they get annoyed with it. It feels like I'm not looking at the quantitative I am, but I'm wanting to also triangulate that with how they felt. I can see their heart rate. I can see their pace, but how did it feel? That allows me to give valuable feedback in terms of where they're at. And so this is, in my opinion, what separates elite training consistency. And I don't just mean elites like high performers, but like age groupers who want to be elite in their training consistency from just doing random hard work for the sake of hard work. Now, I know I said I like RPE, heart rate and duration and adaptation obviously matter. And so every physiological zone has an expected duration and adaptation. And so this is where heart rate can come in. It is a signal that you are training the right adaptations. So for example, below LT1, you train fat metabolism, build endurance, recover faster. Between LT1 and LT2, you build race relevant fitness without blowing up. Above LT2, which is where I find most people spend too much of their time, they build speed, VO2 max adaptations. But you can't do too much of it without the recovery. And so when we look at heart rate or duration or adaptation, this is not guesswork. This is how we start to distribute training. If you've heard of the 80-20 principle, 80% below, 20% above, right? And so that's where this is coming from. So when I work with athletes, we'll look at like a polarized or a pyramidal intensity distribution, depending on what we're training for. And so what I found is when my athletes embrace this type of language and we look at heart rate, we don't ignore it, but we don't idolize it. And we start to understand the duration. We'll ask the question, could you do this for 45 to 60 minutes? If the answer is no, we're probably above LT2. And if we're above LT2, are we getting the right at it? And everything we're trying to do in training is simply get the desired adaptation. So on race day, we can get better. So it doesn't actually matter what the watch says. Now we use it as a proxy, as a reference point. But what we want to do is understand, are we in the right zone? I don't mean zone one, two, three, or zone one through five, if you're looking at that way, but the right physiological adaptation zone to drive performance enhancements. Because at the end of the day, what we want to do is perform best on race day. And so that means everything leading up to it has to be about, am I doing my workouts, my easy runs, my recovery runs, my tempos, whatever it is in the right adaptation zone. So you might be asking, that's a lot of science. That's a lot of like just random knowledge to be put out there. How does this lead to athletes running PRs, Boston qualifiers, or smarting training? This is where the rubber of your soles kind of meets the road, so to speak. When I translate this physiology into coaching, we can identify exactly where your training gaps are. We can target specific adaptations, not guess at them. If we know that you're running your easy runs too fast based on RPE, based on heart rate, based on you know pace values from a VDOT system, then we take that triangulation and we go, hey, wait a second. We're not actually getting the adaptations we want. We might be training the ego that day, but we're not training the physiological adaptation. Now we're not guessing. Using this, we can also avoid overtraining. A lot of athletes, when they come to me, they have like two good weeks, one bad week, two week, good weeks, one bad week. Bomb a workout, okay workout, good workout. They're all over the place. They feel like they're working hard, but they're overtraining and they have no consistency. Once we get all that sorted, we can start to build better training block that turn you into a PR machine or run Boston Clovers or chase race distances you never thought possible. Because at the end of the day, running faster isn't always about running harder. It's generally about running smarter. And what I've found is when runners finally understand where they sit on this chart, everything changes. Workouts start making sense. Efforts match purpose. You start hitting paces with confidence. You stop blowing up mid-race, mid-working. So in short, I could do a full you know, hour probably breakdown on every single piece of this, but I hope this gives you as a bit of a primer that training intensity doesn't have to be confusing. There's a lot of conflicting advice out there. You don't need that data overload or like pick specifically this camp or this camp or this camp. What you need is a framework where you have shared language and understanding that aligns with your physiology and your training. This chart does that. And this is why some of the top coaches I know reference and use this chart. It's why the pros get faster. They understand the purpose of everything they're doing. And it's why you can get your PR, your Boston qualifier, your next breakthrough race. If you want deeper dives into how this framework integrates with specific workouts, Jack Daniels system or pacing strategies, click the videos linked below or at the end of this video. I've got a whole series where I break down everything from easy runs to marathon pace runs to tempo runs to interval runs. And if you want coaching that actually applies to the science, not just talks about it, hit subscribe and let's do it together. Train smart, run faster, and I'll see you next time.